George Washington was elected under the early rules of the U.S. Constitution, which did not allow a direct popular vote for the president and vice president. Instead, the Electoral College was established as a compromise between electing the president by Congress or by popular vote. Here's why. Founders' fear of direct democracy. The framers of the Constitution were concerned about the potential for mob rule, or the general public being too uninformed to make such a significant decision directly. The practice of electors being chosen by state legislatures, rather than by direct vote of the citizens, continued in many states for the first several presidential elections. John Adams, 1796, elected as the second U.S. president, like George Washington, Adams was chosen by the Electoral College. Thomas Jefferson, 1800 and 1804. Jefferson was also elected through the Electoral College. In the controversial election of 1800, he tied with Aaron Burr in the electoral vote, leading the House of Representatives to decide the election. James Madison, 1808 and 1812. Both of Madison's victories came through the Electoral College. James Monroe, 1816 and 1820. Monroe also followed this process, with his 1820 re-election being nearly unanimous in the Electoral College, though direct popular voting was still developing. As time went on, more states began allowing citizens to directly vote for electors. By the mid-1800s, most states had moved to a popular vote to determine which electors would cast their ballots for president. However, the formal election of presidents through the Electoral College continues today, even though the electors now nearly always reflect the popular vote in their respective states.